This is the Samsung Galaxy Flip 6. We have had this phone with us for the last two months. We have used this as a daily driver on and off with respect to performance, gaming, on calls, off calls. Yeah, pretty much has been with me throughout my two months of period with this phone. So if you are a person out in the market waiting to buy the Samsung Galaxy Flip 6, but you waited only to understand if the new phone has any issues that you should be aware of, or if this is the device that you can go with now, because there are now some certain discounts that Samsung will be running, then yes, this video is definitely fake. Let's start off with the design because Samsung has, as you can see, changed the design on the new Flip 6 as compared to the Flip 5. Yes, the display is on the outside, which is a 3.4 inch display and the 6.7 inch display on the inside are the same as compared to the last year. But how you interact with both these displays is different because of the AI, which is another topic that we'll discuss. But with the design, now with the nice flatter curves on the side, not the rounded ones which we had on the previous ones, you are much more confident in holding the phone. Initially, when I had the phone in my hand for the first time, yes, that was an impression that I had. But now that I've been using it for the last two months, I've never even once considered having a cover on this phone. It's because of the confidence that you get while holding this phone and compared to the older phone where I was compelled to use a cover because I was always scared that I might just drop it. And since it's a working hinge here, you're always in this fear that you might just drop the phone and something might happen. But I haven't dropped this phone, touch wood. And even if I do, I think it should withstand that to a certain extent because it's very well built. The hinge is also re-engineered. Let's talk about the software. Let's talk about the software even before we get into the hardware is because the software is where Samsung has made the biggest change in the flip and the fold series of phones and also will trickle down to the other phones which are recent and also the future phones that are coming to us. Now AI has been playing a major role in our day-to-day -day life, may it be our computers, our phones, even the earphones, yes the Galaxy Buds also come with AI in them. So everything that we use on a daily basis is somehow going to be powered or controlled by AI. With the new AI features that we now have on the Samsung Flip and the Fold devices, using these devices has not been the same as it has been before. It's like a complete revamp of how you interact with your devices. And because of that, using the Flip series of phones has just been much more intuitive and much more fun to use as compared to the previous generations of phones. Take for example the translation function that the phones offer. It's very smart where it can detect who's the person who's trying to have a conversation. It will automatically switch the mics and also translate the conversation for you. Now you can read it or it will say it out for you. Hey, what's up, what you doing? You wanna come over for some breath? So there are sometimes, there are hits and misses that are there, but as AI progresses and it learns, because there are different accents that different people might have it does a fairly good job. Apart from that, you can also transcribe your emails, your text messages using the AI. And one of the best features that I've experienced while using these phones as a content creator is what I get with the functionality of AI integrated into the camera and also the images that I can play around with. I can customize images as per my liking with the AI. And it's all done locally on the devices and if there is any computing power that is required by the device, it goes to the cloud. But mostly it's happening on your phone, on your device. So these powerful processors that you have in the phone, which are the latest generation ones, are doing a fairly good deal. That also has to be supported by the hardware. We are able to do much more now with these devices as, we, as compared to what we could do even last year. I can customize. I was speaking about customizing images. I can now draw patterns around my image. So like if I have an image where I need something on an object removed, I can do that. I can place an object there. I can also generate different versions of my picture in 3D or animation or even sketches, which is nice if you're a person who likes to update their profile pictures on a regular basis. And also for content creators, if you are capturing any high speed video, you're able to slow down the footage and the AI will add the frames 
while you're watching or slowing down that video. That's really neat. I've not seen this anywhere before. And as a content creator, also even for content consumption, it's beautiful. Like not everything might work out the way you want it. Like if you have your fingers going in fast, it sometimes confuses the AI with respect to what you're trying to capture. But if other objects, if you're capturing someone on a skateboard or on a motorcycle, playing basketball, it does it really well, flawless. You're not even able to recognize it was done by, as in, was it really captured in this way or it's the AI that is adding frames to it later. So in a sense, that's been beautiful. Another feature that I love that AI brings to these phones now is live transcribe or live translation while you're on the call. Now, say for instance, I have a business partner who's in Russia, or probably I have somebody who speaks in Hindi and I'm not comfortable speaking in Hindi, but I don't want that conversation to happen. I can switch the option on, on my phone. The other person might have a Samsung, not have a Samsung, doesn't matter. But the phone will transcribe the call for you. It'll give an alert to the other person on the other end that this call has been transcribed. And then you'll be able to hear the translation on both the sides. So I'll speak in, say, English, and the other person will get it in Hindi or Russian. And the other person who's on the other call will speak back to me in Hindi or Russian, and then I will be able to hear it in English. We did try this feature. It might get some words wrong here and there, depends on how fast you're speaking to it or your accent. But for most part of it, it goes well and you are able to have that conversation, which is nice and it happens live on the call, which is neat. Since I was talking about data privacy, a lot of people are sort of worried about how data gets processed on these devices. And to give you more added sense of security, if you go into, there's a dedicated menu for the Galaxy AI. Scroll right on the bottom. You have an option where you can switch on process data only on device. You switch it on, everything that you are doing with the help of AI will now get processed on your phone. There'll be no servers used. So yes, you're much more secure with respect to all the crazy ideas that you have in your mind and you're asking the AI to generate. Not bad. Let's talk about the hardware changes that have happened in this phone, which sort of have also assisted the AI. You have a 50 megapixel sensor now as a main sensor as compared to the 12 megapixel which were there on the older phone. Uh, the battery too has improved and that does help with the overall performance of the phone with respect to how it lasts throughout the day. If you have an average screen time of anywhere between 5.7 to 6.3 hours of usage, that is screen on time, by the end of the day, you will get maybe 20% of battery still to spare. So you can still use the phone throughout the night or just have it lying around and in the morning, just before leaving, you can connect to your charger and you'll have a battery for the rest of the day as well. It does charge in about one, one and a half hour. That's one hour, it'll charge up to 80, 85 very quickly. And then the other rest is slightly stoked. That's to save the battery. But in spite of having this smaller factor, two batteries on one on this section and the other on this section, it is able to give me a full day usage without any problem, which is neat. So coming to the verdict, is this a phone that you should buy out in the market? Is it too early? No, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's early. I think it's at the right time that you're investing into the product. It's already in its sixth generation now, so there are fairly good amount of improvements that have gone into the hardware. Software updates are something that you will get on a regular basis from Zaxel, and AI is just growing, evolving, and you're going to be a big contributor to it. So yeah, and it's cheaper as well from what it started off as an introduction price. It's now retailing at 4,299, which is not bad. And there are also exclusive offers that Samsung has on their website with colors as well. So do check it out. This has been the two month review of the Samsung Galaxy Flip 6. We will be reviewing the Samsung Galaxy Fold 6 and the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra on this channel very soon. So stay tuned for that. This is Aurelius signing off from the Corny Impression. Have a great evening.